Hello, Fanny. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's great to be back here. As I step into the room, um, Alan Ma said, you know, your speech last year was pretty good because it was not so serious. So I said, you were not disappointed today. My speech will not be serious. Because I know my role. Uh, I'm the Minister of Commerce, and you guys are all expert in the field in I IoT. And you say, well, what would a minister know about IoT? And in fact, yes, you're right. I don't know anything. But uh, you know, when I go to the legislature, I always have to explain policy. And this is one place when I feel really at home. I could be the one today, turn to table. I would be the blue sky thinker, and you're the expert who have to answer uh, in a bureaucratic way policies and how to develop IoT. Now, I think there are a lot of, lot of potentials in, in IoT. And uh, you just look at uh, today, the, uh, the uh, theme, embracing big data analytics and cloud computing with IoT application. If you look at my, my PowerPoint presentation, you will see that it is really, we have already embraced uh, IoT. So I, I, I have a little problem with this title. I think that's actually in the past tense. We have embraced IoT. That was like last decade. Where are we now? We are now really launching into a next phase of how to use this, to this very busy picture. It's actually reminded me of the movie Matrix. You know, when you have all these binary figures coming down, you know, are you the one? Can you identify the pattern? How it is gonna work? And take the leadership, take charge, and bring it to the next phase. So I think you, who are in the room today are the one to tell us how we can shape this IoT things into the next big thing. It's not so, when you see beyond this busyness of the interwoven of our daily life with technology, with, with internet, with sensors, then you will see that actually it will present us with a lot of opportunities. And as you say, look at the statistics. In 2015, there are 4.9 connected, 4.9 billion connected things. Uh, I pity those people in channel two because I'm going quite fast and I think the interpreter is probably having a hard time now following my speed. We have 4.9 billion connected things this year. By 2020, we will have five times that. We will have about no, four times. My math is kind of rusty today. 20 billion connected things in five years time. What does that tell us? It's like going to an exam when you already don't know the question. You know, you, you just have to prepare the answer yourself. We know it's coming. We know that it is already here. We know it will be big in the future. So it call upon us to figure out how to do this. And why are we here today? Because of the advance in mobile sensors, advance in, ice, in, ice, uh, in low power IC technology that we have, that is in really have the critical mass and we're at that mature, maturity. That help us to have a lot of things like wearables. Uh, and I, my, my, I make my suits, I wear these, <laughs> and I wear that. And actually getting kind of heavy. These are not wearable, but I, you know, they're, they're bearable wearables. And I think I would put that aside first. Now we have wearables and we have mobile device, we have smart city technology, we have, uh, we have automation, we have advanced man manufacturing, and we have big data analytics. That really opened up the door for all of us. And this is where we are. And as a government, we embrace that. We have embraced that already. So we are at, I just wanna show you today some of the 1.0 version of what is here today that we are using. Take, for example, the water supplies department. We have put sensors into all our pipes in the city. So it helped us in many things. It, it increased inf efficiency. Uh, it, it gathered the information and data for us. It helped us in the maintenance program cut down costs. It also identified all the risk that, that we face, water leakage and all that, and it provides personal surface, personalized surface for all of us. It makes life so much easier. Take another example. We have um, the uh, drainage, the drainage surface department. They also connect with uh, intelligent ultra sensor, ultrasonic um, sensor into the pipes and, and sewage and storm water so that we can identify the rainwater uh, when there will be a risk. Uh, you know, again, it would help us in, in efficiency in terms of maintenance 
uh, in, in terms of controlling the volume of water in these systems. It's a great thing. It's already here. This is 1.0. Take for an, another example. Uh, those of you who like hiking, you get into the enjoy hike, hiking uh, apps that we have, and you press a button, you activate the program. You can go on hiking, and you can get lost. Hong Kong, actually those who are visiting Hong Kong, you don't know that 40, over 40% 40 of our land mass in Hong Kong is protected green areas, a great hiking trail. So you can really go on like a lot of rides and you can get lost sometimes. And so the, this application GPS, uh, uh, with GPS capability would tell people if you're at risk, your relative, if you haven't returned home in 24 hours, you probably call up the police and say, hey, we got someone missing. And then, well, if you're on this program, then it really helped to find you. And I've been thinking on the way here, thinking about this program this is really, really great. For those, for those of you who have teenagers at home, you know, before you send off your kids, you just ask them, put on one of these programs, press a button, you know where they are. Really good if you're equipped with a uh, webcam and you can exactly look where they are before you send them off to a night party. And have all these audio and you see what, they're, what conversation they, they engage in. That is only in your dream. I don't, that would never happen. But anyway, um, next thing is like personalized service. I, out there I saw a, a third party application that was very similar to what I'm going to talk, talk about. This is Makalu Moto Bus. You could get on. You want to find your route, get these apps, and you would know where it will be the next three buses that would be arriving to this bus stop. You know exactly where you are. You can plan your route. It gives you 21 routes, uh, and, and uh, it, it tells you uh, where the bus stops are. If you haven't been in, the, you know, you have not, you don't really know where the bus stops are. You know, within me in 200 meters, it can tell you all the bus stops that are available. So it really personalized service. And I'm telling you what, uh, what is here today. What about tomorrow? What about the matrix I talk about? What about finding that common pattern that would help us to be the internet center, the, the IoT uh, hub of excellence in the future? And why am I talking about this? Because I'm a commerce minister. We have a lot of OEM manufacturer in this region. In fact, we have 300,000 factories that we control across the border. We want to move up the value chain. We want to really tap into this, the latest technology. I see a great uh, convergence of the manufacturing as well as the technology. Uh, we have a lot of startup company coming to Hong Kong. We have an explosion of companies coming from Silicon Valley, from Europe, from North America, from, uh, from Israel. They like Hong Kong because they see a lot of things that we have doing right here. Uh, we have a really good financial infrastructure that they can raise capital from seed capital to, to Series A, Series B, to IPO. They can do that. We have excellent legal services and help them to make deals. Uh, we have very good protection for IP regime. Um, we, do intern we, we do IP trading. Uh, we, Hong Kong is an IP trading hub. And you cannot develop IoT without IP. And IP is really strategic component in the whole thing. Um, we have arbitration and media mediation services in case your partner around the world have problem uh, agreeing with each other. You could have it arbitrated in Hong Kong and have that award enforced, say in mainland China. And that is a great plus. It reduces your uncertainty and enhance your value of investment. So, what other thing, why would still people come to Hong Kong? Because this is a place where hardware and software merge together. You could do crowdfunding in North America, in Silicon Valley. I, I'm told by these companies who come from there. They can bring the prototype to deliver to people. Of, of course, there are a lot of makers lab around the world. This is a huge movement. Mainland China actually invests heavily in, in makers lab. But they make prototypes only. They can, cannot do mass production. They cannot do commercialization. They need the infrastructure like what we have in Hong Kong. We are located in a very strategic place in the world where all these advantages converge together. That is why I am a blue sky thinker today, giving you what we have. We're in the verge of being that internet of things center of the world when we can link people together. Now this is 
what I'm talking about is a blue sky version. And I will leave the question to the ones who are coming up on the stage today to tell you exactly what they read from this binary data and what we will become. Yesterday, I met with a, a group of startups from, uh, from elsewhere in the world. I, I, I have a lot of meetings with these guys. When I see the, the latest thinking, I say, hey, come on up to my office, let's talk. And yesterday, they gave me a version, macro thinkers, about what IoT would look like in Hong Kong and give me some components. So I don't want to take any credit. I didn't come up with this list. This is their list. But I want to give you some food for thought for today's session. And speakers, please take note. And you could take note. I would appreciate that. Talk about these things. What we need in Hong Kong to become that internet, uh, that IoT center of excellence. I can't memorize all these points, so I brought what they gave me. And I'll read this out to you. And take note, we need outside innovators and startups drawing from leading technology innovators from world's leading innovation centers. We don't need indigenous invention. We can't. We are too small a population. We can draw upon all the talents and innovation from around the world. Secondly, we need a, I, Hong Kong needs the IoT Center for Excellence to showcase the possibility, open up the eyes of our visitors, of our innovators, that what we could help them to succeed in Hong Kong. We need a manufacturing and supply chain platform that provide access and interface surfaces to Pearl River Delta area. This is where hardware and software converge. We need the IoT Advanced Manufacturing R&D Consortium. This is why we're here today in Science Park, and we have R&D Center representatives. Uh, coming here because we need the customization. We also need coordinated investment platform comprises of angel, VC, PE, family offices, crowdfunding. My colleague Casey Chan, the Secretary for Finance, uh, Financial Services and Treasury is now working very hard to have our legislation, our legislation keep up to date with all the latest development. We also need coordinated learning platform to see, to help people to learn material people content to support this education and promote investment. We need conferences and outreach. Well, we need all, all of you to be the Jedi, to go and preach the gospel of IoT, how it would transform the world. We need innovation and entrepreneurship organization network. And that's why we have all these co-working spaces explosion already from three to about 35 at this moment in Hong Kong. Tsinghua University just opened up recently, the largest co-working space in Hong Kong. We need industry partner network to develop a key innovation anchor companies. These major companies will then draw in the talents and the know-how to Hong Kong. Government. We, the government, the government, governmental agency interface so we can help them to tap into all the resources that we're going to be putting out for them to develop. Uh, we need human resources pipeline. Now, we actually have a lot of advantage going for, for us. We have a lot of brightest minds from the mainland that they come to Hong Kong in our education, they train in our educational system, they understand the culture here, they understand the culture in mainland China, and these are very bright people. These are resources that how we can draw to connect the software and the hardware. Um, we also need open hardware innovation IP platform to leverage and align to Hong Kong strategic IP hub. This is what I'm talking about, the IP trading. You cannot do IoT without IP. And finally, we need rapid prototyping capabilities. Sure enough, there are a lot of makers lab around the world, but who else can do commercialization better than us? So I thank you for organizing this very, very uh, insightful, a very, very important issue that we could all deliberate on today. Unfortunately, I have to promote tourism right after this symposium. So I cannot stay here to listen to all your speakers, but I'll leave you to these issues. Uh, as well, later on this afternoon, I have to attend uh, legislative Council to sit there for hours to listen to debates. I'd much rather to be here, so I thank you for your time. Thank you very much.